Jerry Jones says Mike McCarthy could be back for the 2025 season. Should we believe him? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com to get started. Welcome back. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. You can follow him on Twitter at McCoolBCB. On today's show, we're going to break down some of the All-22 film from the Cowboys' win over the Commanders. We'll talk about Mozzie Smith's improvement. We'll talk about the run game improving on offense for Dallas. But we got – I don't even want to call it news because it's not news. No, it's, it's just not. Jerry Jones talking. Uh, Jerry Jones this morning on 105.3 The Fan said that he could see Mike McCarthy returning in 2025 with a contract extension. Lane, I just want you uh, when you heard that or when you read it on Twitter, what were your initial thoughts? Uh, you know, it's not any crazier than some of the other stuff that we've heard. You know, I I, I don't know. Like I, I think this is a very this is a very complicated subject because I do think that you and I have said that there are aspects about Mike McCarthy that I think this team will miss when he's gone. And I think there are elements about the way he coaches that are extreme positives for this team. And I think that that that's bared out the last three seasons, right? Like they've won 36 games in the three seasons before this. So um, I, I, I think that, it, the timing of it is very, you know, is very funny. Obviously, like after their first win in like, you know, four games or five games, and they're trying to like, uh, you know, like already, you know, wedge in a, a contract resign conversation. But yeah, but you know what though, I, I honestly, I don't think it's the win is why you're seeing this. To be honest, um, yeah, let's talk about the, the back because I, I the number one job for a head coach is obviously to win, but to do that, you have to have your players believe in your system and play hard, right? Yeah. If you have a, a talented bunch of uh, players and they just don't play hard, you're not going to win anything, right? And mm-hmm. that's how things fall off really quickly. I think the fact that Mike McCarthy has had this team, even the last couple of weeks and games that they lost, including that Texans game, they played really, really hard and physical in those games, despite being a team that's out of the playoff contention. I think it does say a lot about your head coach. Yeah, they're not quitting on him, you know. No, like, and, no. and 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 that's the thing about it is that, like, even when the entire rest of the world around everyone around Dallas, around you know the NFL world, around the world has quit on the Cowboys, this team hasn't quit on themselves yet, and and that's a, a lot of part to you know, I think the head coach and 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 look, I mean, I, I think that has the head coach had some some fault in this? Absolutely, he yes. has. Yes, uh, but he's also been dealt some pretty terrible circumstances at at times. So. Um, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's the Mike McCarthy thing sounds a lot less crazy. The more you start discussing the other options that are being discussed, right. And like the other names that are being kicked around. So, uh, I, it certainly is not my first choice or certainly wouldn't be my first choice for Mike McCarthy to be, be back. Uh, because my first choice would be like to try something new, to see some, you know, some new blood in here and to kind of get something going. Uh, but if, you know, if you could find a way to convince Mike to take a step back from the play calling duties, I I don't think he will. And I don't think that that's likely, no. No. but if you could find a way to do that and you could come and get a legitimate, uh, 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 play caller in here who actually, you know, give the, you excited about this offense again. I don't think it's the, the worst option of all the options that we've heard about as far as, you know, yep. what's going to happen in 2025 and beyond. I want to add some more context because I think what really happened is last night on Monday night football, uh, yeah. Joe Buck and Troy Aikman were discussing the, the Cowboys and Troy Aikman made a comment about how Mike McCarthy is a hell of a coach and that they shouldn't get rid of him. Right. And I think that's probably why uh, the guys over at 105.3, the fan asked that question. Yeah. Um, 
So <laughs> it's really hard because if you have if you have a coach who the players are playing hard for, but you're not getting the results, what do you do? Um, I don't know. I, I I think I'm at to the point where I would like to see something new as well. And I think McCarthy is a better coach than the, the national public maybe thinks or tells us. Um, but does that mean he's the right coach for the Cowboys? I don't know. The other thing I want to mention is, Landon, there's no way the Cowboys bring back Mike McCarthy if they know Ben Johnson wants to come here or mm. they know Bill Belichick wants to come here. Like, I think you probably would have to find out through back channels if like those guys are out. But if those guys are in, I, I just don't see – I don't see the Cowboys keeping McCarthy. Well, let's be clear. If the Cowboys actually have interest in Ben Johnson, like that's my number one choice right there. Like, yeah, sure. You know, of so th- my concern is more not even that the that the guy the the Ben Johnsons and the Bill Belichick's of the world don't want to come coach here. That's not really a concern for me. My concern is that this this you know ownership doesn't want to necessarily they want to rule out some of the best candidates before they even get interviews right and and that yeah. they that they they they're setting filters uh, uh incorrectly and 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 weeding out good potential candidates I, you know I, I think if you go in and, and only with the idea of potentially hiring a retread head coach you're, you're missing a lot of opportunity so I think that that's my number one thing is I would love to see them kind of abolish that policy and and take a chance on maybe a new coach who has some new ideas. But if that isn't for that, isn't in the cards, if that isn't an option for the Cowboys, if the ownership isn't going to allow that Mike McCarthy is as good as any of the rest of the candidates that you've heard talk about. And he's already established here. The, 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 the players like him again, I don't love it, but, but I think, it's in the context of everything else that we're hearing about the names that we're hearing bantied about. I I mean, I'll take, I think I probably would take Mike McCarthy over a Bill Belichick led team. That's got, you know, Bill Belichick's, you know, hand chosen assistants, uh, uh, you know? So, (laughs) well, I mean, listen, I, I was, I was in on Bill Belichick until last night when it was fourth and inches from the Ravens 28 yard line. And he was telling Harbaugh that he needed to kick the field goal. I'm like, okay, we're out. I don't want to do this anymore. You guys, we're out. you guys are just just don't understand old ball coaches. It's like y'all, everyone was making fun of Bill Belichick this morning because he printed out his Gmails, and I'm like, no, you don't understand. This is a guy who understands preparedness. What happens when all of y'all laptops go run out of battery? He's still got the answers, guys. He's still got the answers. So, uh, by the way, yeah, did, you see, I, I, did you see that that it was Matt Patricia sending him the questions from? If you if you zoom in, out, it was Patricia that was sending him the email the. Quite, never mind. Uh, I, let's but the one who's actually answering all his emails at this yeah, point. I'm pretty that, certain. So, yeah. Uh, I want to talk about this in relation to Mike Zimmer because we have yeah. seen some better things from Zim over the last couple of weeks. And again, I know the Houston score ended up being ridiculous, but that game was a lot closer than what yes. I think a lot of people anticipate. Are you becoming more open to the idea of Zimmer returning in 2025? Yeah. And actually, to answer your question fully, uh, when I saw the Mike McCarthy quote, I actually had been kind of since last night, since kind of watching some of the tape, I have been kind of going over my head. What does it look like if the Cowboys decided they wanted to keep Mike Zimmer, right? Like even if, even if they didn't keep Mike McCarthy, what would it look like if the Cowboys decided, Hey, let's give Zimmer another year to see what we can do. I think it's a bad idea to do that. I I do. I I think it's probably not going to help your situation in the, the you know the head no, coaching search or, or if you want to bring ben, if you want to bring Ben Johnson you want Ben Johnson to pick his sure. his guy right if you bring in Bill Belichick you want Bill Belichick running the defense and not Mike Zimmer so I think it's almost a package deal mm-hmm. um, which makes this really complicated because I do I I've liked what I've seen from Zimmer over the past few weeks yeah I think that's kind of where I was just getting at is that I do think uh, you know politics and and all of that aside i do think that what zimmer has done these last few weeks uh is it, it shows kind of what he had in plan and what he had in mind for this year obviously things didn't work out the way that we wanted with the injuries and obviously the way the offense works but i do think that now that we're seeing you know this defense get healthier they're kind of playing in this scheme a lot better you're starting to see the results that that you know i think zim anticipated and hoped for uh, and and I and I've I've you know been impressed to the point where I thought it was worth mentioning that you know if, if somehow he were retained next year, I don't think it's the worst thing. But I do agree that in, in a situation where you're getting a new head coach, it just doesn't seem very likely. 
All right. Yes or no. Is Mike McCarthy back in 2025? I'm going to say no for right now, but I, but I would not be shocked if it was a yes you know, here in a few weeks. Uh, I'll, I will say no. I mean, I think a lot of it is going to depend on how they play over the next two months, yeah. not the record, but how they play. If they play a lot of like really inspired football. And it's clear that like your leaders on the team are pushing for Mike McCarthy to stay. I think that gives it a better chance, but I, I would lean no right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's dive into the all 22 film from the Cowboys week 12 win over the commanders. We will get to Mozzie Smith's development next. This episode is brought to you by Skylight. Do you struggle to find the perfect gift during the holidays? Listen, my wife is terrible to buy for. She just has no hobbies or interests, so I can never find anything that she actually actually likes. But I did this year. We've got the perfect gift for all of you out there. Skylight Frames is the touchscreen digital photo frame that your whole family is going to love. You can upload thousands of photos with your phone and watch them appear in seconds. It's so easy to use. There's seamless sharing. You can invite friends and family to share photos. And all you need is the free Skylight mobile app and an email. It's so easy. The touch screen is a game changer. You can swipe through photos. It looks fantastic in your phone or in your home. It has five different frame styles. It looks amazing. Plus you can set it up in gift mode so you can upload the pictures already to it. So when it's opened up for the holidays, the, the images in your photos are already in it when it's plugged in. And now as a special limited time offer for our listeners, get $20 off your first purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash NFL. That is S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash NFL and get $20 off your first purchase now at skylightframe.com slash NFL. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. And this is a great week, week to join because we've got three games on Thanksgiving. We've got a Black Friday game between the Raiders and the Chiefs. And then we've got some really good Sunday action, including the Bills and 49ers on Sunday Night Football. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That is FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Welcome back to the Locked on Cowboys podcast. We are breaking down the all 22 film from the Cowboys week 12 win over the commanders. Linda, let's talk about Mozzie Smith, who put together a pretty solid game. What did you see from him on tape? What it is with Mozzie is that it it, it feels like it's uh, the culmination of like him getting better at several little things, you know, and that that's kind of just increasing the quality of his of his play overall. Uh, for instance, the, the things that I, I just feel like, you know, that he's really kind of improved on is, it, first of all, his his late in the snap effort is better. And I, I don't yeah. think this is just a hustle thing or a try hard thing. I, I think this is more of a having a plan throughout the snap, right? Like, you know, like even, no matter what happens, you know, after the initial kind of action in the snap, if there's pursuit, he knows that he needs to go chase down. He's 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 not like confused or or he's he's seeing the field, the ball a lot better. It feels like, which I think is 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 contributing to him being involved in more plays. You're seeing more of him coming down the line of scrimmage on on like zone stuff and like tack making tackles uh, that are you know uh, that where he's on the backside of the play. Um, I, I think that stuff like that where it's just experience. It's just him getting more opportunities in the game and then kind of knowing what he's supposed to be doing throughout the snap. That's, that's improved. Uh, I, I think on double teams, you know, before what we, what you would see is, and he still does have a problem with getting high, uh, getting, yeah. getting high, yeah. uh, too high off the snap. But I think there, the, the issue is that he would get up and then just be pushed, 
you know, three and four yards off the ball. Uh, and, and and again, that's obviously a huge problem for a nose tackle. He he, and it's not like a strength thing with him. It's never been a power thing. It's it's a technique thing. It's understanding how to take on that those blocks and how to be strong and keep your balance. And I think what you're seeing now is that he's only being influenced by double teams as opposed to being kind of escorted out of the hole, which yeah, is blah, blah, a, a blah, big blah. a big difference, right? It's like it's not it's not like he's leaving a huge gaping hole. It's just that he's being you know moved. And, 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 you know, he'll get even better from there. But I, the, the point is, is that we've seen improvement. And I think even in that realm, you're seeing him get influenced and he's using his hands a lot better, right? Like one of the things that we were taught, we talked about with Mozzie coming out is that specifically he has freakish torque strength, right? Mm-hmm. Like we talked about at Michigan, he literally broke that torque machine that they have that measures kind of uh, turning power, right? And what you're seeing is that he's an, an, uh, engaging blockers. He's getting up on them. And then once he gets his hands on them, he's finishing them off on the ground and then getting to the play as needed. Uh, I think that that's, you know, the, a little bit more comfort with his hands. He's using like a, a single kind of standing one arm, uh, long arm to kind of maintain uh, his strength in the hole to like uh, control blockers at times. Uh, you know, just, just seeing him using his hands in general is – is 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 a real benefit to, to, to his game and it's something that's really kind of helped level up his game uh and then finally i think the big thing that's that's kind of helped him on a schematic st- uh standpoint is that they're starting to use him a little bit more in kind of some run stunts uh, and he's been very effective that he is like the thing about mozzie is that if he can get you know he gets to the offseason can get some strength can can learn to to kind of unlock a little bit of of his pad level and play a little bit lower. He has all that power and that ability to kind of be, you know, your standard nose tackle, but then on top of that, he is this guy who can really really move for a 315 mm-hmm. pounder or whatever. He has some really good athleticism. I saw a play where they tried to cut him in the hole and he pushed the he pushed the defender down and then kept his feet and was, was like very nimbly getting down the line of scrimmage. That's just not something you see from a nose tackle. So if you can eventually get him, you know, to continue on this track where he's a good nose tackle, he's taking on double teams, he's defeating single blocks, and then on top of that, on plays when it's running away from him, he's also just an eleventh guy to go and chase on the backside that you don't normally get from your nose tackle. Uh, that can be a real a real benefit to this defense. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing more splash plays from him. Like before, like even go back to the early part of the year. I mean, we would go games without him making having an play. Yeah, yeah, having a game. Uh, and now you're seeing one or two week, you know, weekly. In this game, it was the first play of the game, he threw his guy out of the, the club and made a, a base. <laughs> yeah, Biotish. Be- 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 yeah. It should yeah. have made the tackle. I think Osa cleaned it up. There was another play where he hustled down the line to help mm-hmm. make a tackle for a loss. You're starting to see those plays more consistently, and that's honestly, if he can continue to do that, he's going to be just fine. I also want to put this like historically, you look at the defensive tackles that are nose tackle types, and what you you guys know what I mean, like the 330 pounders. Yeah. Generally, whether that's Derek Brown or Dexter Lawrence, or even go a little smaller, like a Cam Hayward in Pittsburgh, almost all those guys struggled right out of the gate. Like I again, I. This is just because I have a ridiculous amount of Steeler knowledge. Mm-hmm. Cam Hayward hardly played for the Steelers the first two That's years right. of his career. That's but right. by year four, it's when he started to become a force. It takes a long time for these guys to get NFL man strength, right? Like you can dominate 18, 19 year old dentists, but once mm-hmm. you get to the NFL and you're going up against 29, 30 year old guys that have a hundred starts under the belt, it's not as easy to throw those guys around. So I think you're starting to see it more i told somebody yesterday to me the biggest thing i want to see from mozzie the rest of the year is just stay healthy i think yeah him getting healthy going into the 2025 offseason is going to be huge because last year he was dealing with a shoulder injury all offseason and i think that contributed to him starting off the season really slow so if he can continue to play well and stay healthy i think we could see him make a massive leap in 2025 
I think the reason that you just mentioned is why we ha- didn't get to see the kind of 2024 season from Mozzie that we wanted to, right? He didn't get the opportunity to have the off season to, to lift weights, to put on 20 pounds of muscle yeah. to, to do Which he needed things. to do anyways. Like he needed to get up and he, he really couldn't to. do it with, with and he couldn't lifting. because yeah, that's right. So not only could he not get the weight that he needed, he couldn't get the strength that he needed. So what, what was the hope this off season, this season, not off season, what was the hope this season that the, the hope was, that he would gain the institutional knowledge, the experience, the technique that he needed, because that's, you, you got to find a way to, to improve somehow. You weren't going to be able to prove your strength, really. I mean, you can lift weights, but it's just not quite the same, right? But what you can do is improve your awareness, your technique. Yep. And I think what we've seen is that that has been improving markedly, and that sets himself up for a very big 2025 season, and I'm excited to see it. And the last thing I wanted to say, if you watch his film from the first four weeks of the season, Early in the games, you can see him play well. But as the games went on, his conditioning was just poor. And I think a lot of that is because he was trying to put on weight without being able to lift weights, right? So it's probably a lot of bad weight. And you just wear down as the game goes on. I still think he does that a little bit now. Yes. yes. It's not It's not anywhere near. It's more severe. snaps, right? It's, it, yeah. you know, he, he, but he was playing. He's been playing 25 to 30 snaps this whole season. I think the difference is, is that before you were getting – seven or eight solid snaps out of him. Now you're getting 10 or 15 solid snaps out of him, which is important. Let's talk about the Cowboys run game, which I thought looked pretty good on Sunday. We will talk about that unit next. This episode is brought to you by Hillsdale college. Time is our most precious commodity. So don't waste it scrolling through the same mind numbing content for hours and hours. How can you spend it wisely to improve yourself? We've got our sponsor, Hillsdale College, which is offering more than 40 free, that's right, free online courses, including Constitution 101, The Meaning and History of the Constitution, Introduction to Free Market Economics, The Great American Story, A Land of Hope, and The Rise and Fall of the Roman Republic. All of Hillsdale's courses are self-paced so that you can start whenever and tune in wherever. Plus, you can go deeper with readings, quizzes, discussions, Or just kick back and enjoy the lectures like I do when I'm sitting in the truck for pickup line at daycare. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. That is hillsdale.edu slash locked on to register. Hillsdale.edu slash locked on. Welcome back to the Lockdown Cowboys podcast. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen, check out the new Lockdown NFL show. Two shows every single day. One in the morning with Tyler Rowland. One in the afternoon with Tony Wiggins. uh, Available wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Plus, we've got the NFC squad shows coming out later this week, Landon, which I believe you are hosting. Still correct? I, I, we haven't heard gotten word yet if, if, uh, if our bet has been made official, but yes, it, even if I'm not, I will be, uh, dominating that, that show to be sure whether I'm hosting or not. Okay. I can't wait. <laughs> Hopefully David shows up. Uh, all right, later. Let's, uh, let's talk about the run game. Uh, how do you think the run game performed in week 12? Yeah. I mean, I think we have to start with Rico, right? Like, I, I think, you know, we've obviously had a lot. I mean, first of all, the context here you're missing both your starting offensive guards. You're going into a situation where you have a backup quarterback. You know, there, there wasn't a lot of offensive options here. So the run game was really, I mean, I think they, they telegraphed it, but I I also think that there wasn't, you know, much other choice. They knew that they were going to have to rely on the run game. So the fact that that the Cowboys were able to run the ball the way they did with Washington, knowing that they were going to run the ball, yeah. Uh, I thought was a really impressive effort. And I think it starts, like I was mentioning, it starts with Rico's improvement. I, I just think that Rico, as he's gotten these these touches, as he's gotten this experience, he's just improved so much. And, and the difference that you're seeing in him, like I think that there was one play where, uh, and I, I really wanted to clip it, but it's really hard to kind of like show just how special it was. But there was a play where uh, it was a handoff to the left-hand side Guyton had kind of lost control of, of, of his block a little bit, and the defender was trying to get in. And as Rico was taking the handoff, he can see the defender kind of defeating uh, a guy and about to come around. And as Rico takes the handoff, he stutters. He sets up his move. Like, as, as he's taking the handoff, doesn't look down at the ball. He sets up the move. He kind of breaks a little bit inside. 
fakes like he's going to go outside, and then that, that draws the defender in, which puts Guyton in, in phase of the block, and then he just weaved back behind him up the field for an eight-yard gain, which should have been like a negative two-yard gain. And it, it, it's stuff like that and just the kind of – sync and timing that he has with the blocking that it didn't feel like was there previous to this. And, 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 you know, considering the fact that, again, I just mentioned they had two backup guards who hadn't really played at all this year in uh, on the offensive line. It, it's just Rico's own internal clock and, and, and internal timing of understanding how these plays develop and his patient feet that has developed that, that has really kind of uh, 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 really been a huge benefit and kind of increased. And I think you really started to see it with some of the outside runs, which I, I think we should talk about some of the outside runs because yeah. I really feel like that was an interesting wrinkle and it was an effective wrinkle. Uh, you didn't really look, we know about Quinn's defenses. They're, they're usually light. They're fast. They don't have a lot of beef up front necessarily. Obviously this Washington version has a little bit more of that because they've got Deron Payne because they've got Newton, but normally you wouldn't consider running the ball on the outside as a better option than running inside because of the you know constitution of these these rosters right the cowboys flipped the, everything on their head they they had no problem tossing the ball outside and then what was happening is that once you got all these young offensive linemen on the hoof they were able to shield guys off and then rico was cutting it back up inside. Like he wasn't trying to b- beat everyone out to the edge. He was letting everything develop out on on the on the side. And then once all the blocks were in place, it's like he was a, a ski slalomer, right? He was just r- finding a, an alleyway up through it. And it, there was like three or four of those different runs where the Cowboys were able to get really solid blocks on the perimeter from uh, uh, BSF and and uh, from Mingo had a several yeah. different good blocks yeah. in this game. Uh, and 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 because and and because they got solid blocks on the edge, you had offensive linemen getting to the second level and sealing guys off. It allowed uh, Rico some time to be patient in the backfield, get to the edge, see the the kind of opening valley, and then find his way through it really quickly. So I think that that was something that really worked well for the Cowboys. Uh, they they leaned into the offensive athleticism that they had with the young guys. That, you know, no, no beat up yep. Zach Martin. You know, a little bit lighter. Uh, guy than, than uh, Tyler Smith and they ran more even more zone than they normally do yep. <laughs> um, and I think again uh, you know the 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 perimeter blocks really helping and, and I, I have to point this out because again we've been the victims of this but a good portion of what happened and the positivity in the run game was because you were playing against a, a Dan Quinn defense yeah. he, he deployed three or four different uh, 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 d- uh, formations and looks that were just terrible uh, run defense formations were, you know, similar to what uh, putting Micah Parsons in, in at, at three technique, like we were, except on rundowns, he was, they were doing that. Uh, and then the Cowboys were able to take advantage of certain situations where those formations were lined up at times when they were called, they had runs called in it and they just were able to kind of destroy them. So overall, a, a lot of different little things kind of added up to a, a, a positive run game. In this, in this situation. I, I, I just have a couple notes on their run game. Um, they haven't been able to run the ball a ton this year because they've been down in all these games. So when you look That's at true. the raw rushing numbers, yes, they are at the bottom of the league, right? But if you look at like efficiency numbers, Landon, like they're actually pretty good. Now, again, this is just Rico Dowdle. Forget the rest of the nonsense, but Rico Please. Dowdle is seventh in the NFL in rushing success rate. Now, what he's not doing that Tony Pollard did uh, in previous seasons is he's just not creating – those big explosive runs. Like mm-hmm. he didn't even have a 10 yard run on Sunday, but he is doing a great job of getting consistently four, five, six yards, right? Yeah. Um, which is also, I think I told you this on Sunday. It, it was disappointing to me on that. I think it was the final offensive drive of the game for the Cowboys where they just needed to run the clock and try to get yeah. one first down. Rico didn't get a single carry. They went read option with Cooper Rush, bootleg with Cooper Rush. And then I think some kind of pass on third down. Like the, I, I wanted, I wanted the young offensive line Rico to get a chance to, to to seal the game on the ground, and they didn't give him that opportunity. But as a whole, this rushing offense has been effective. They just haven't got the chance to do it very often. I believe Rico right now is averaging oh like ten carries a game throughout the season. He needs to almost double that. Just to put even more context on this, uh, you mentioned he's seventh, I think, in yes. in, uh, in success rate. He's like point, or he's like two percent 
off of 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 the guy that they, that no one will stop talking about uh, Saquon Barkley. No, not uh, even. It, so Barkley is fifty six point one percent. Rico is 55.4%. So less than a percentage point. Now, again, the difference between Barkley and Dowdle is Barkley is hitting these 60 yards, 70 yard home runs where Rico is more of your singles and double hitter. Like he's getting on base every time. But he's hitting he's hitting singles and doubles at a much higher rate than 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 Barkley is because Barkley's making up for it. My but that's actually my point is my point is we need to start tr- treating Rico like he's the fo- a focal point of this offense because he already is, guys. Yeah. On those situations where it's time to grind it down the four-minute offense, guess what? Use your star running back no. and treat him as much. Get, you will get rewarded. Don't just tr- feel like you can, need to continue to hodgepodge this together. Rico is Rico in the run game is one of the only things that is actually consistently working now on this offense lean on it. it 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 actually worked for you in this game but we should continue to go forward with this. and you know what's so frustrating about this again it, success rate isn't the end all be all when it comes no. to running backs but rico is averaging for like four and a half yards a carry which yeah. is more than fine but if you were to combine ezekiel elliott and dalvin cook and deuce vaughn all three of those guys into one player they are so they're so far in last that the gap between them and the, the other worst running back is bigger than any other gap among all running backs. So just stop with the other nonsense and just That's lead right. on Rico. And you might actually have a pretty effective run game for the next six games. Sign Rico to a long-term deal before the end of the season, before he gets on the market, go get a, a an alternate back and let's thrive in 2025. And that's honestly, that's what they need. And we've been talking about this all off season. They need the running back. That's going to give them the splash play the juice, and the juice. And they just never found it. Like and it's, it, it is hurting their offense, but not in the ways that maybe that we thought. Uh, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked on Cowboys your first listen of the day. Go check out the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms. Follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. And we will see you right back here tomorrow answering your Twitter questions.